Welcome to Total Eastern Wilderness. Never in my life have I witnessed such a heavenly collection of countless cascades. Shenandoah offers sweet summertime bliss in the form of cold plunges and forested creekside trails, representing all of what makes the natural side of the east so enchanting and beautiful. Mossy sunlit forests with veins of clear mountain streams, endless greenery and late summer blooms to explore, heavenly views painted with misty cloud cover, pure magic to discover at every turn. In my first few days in the park, I experienced some planning lows, elevation highs, and my favorite hike in the park, learning the moments to plan and the moments to release, amongst many other timeless lessons of the road. Adventures are often painted in such a light-hearted image of ease and freedom, yet often those brush strokes are made with deep discomforts and unexpected challenges, something the East Coast has dealt me no shortage of. Challenging the lessons learned in the humble beginnings of my nomadic journey and reinforcing them with new obstacles and perspectives, illuminating the nature of this life, one as a perpetual student. In this video, we embark on one of the most challenging hikes in the park, reflecting on the collected gems of wisdom gained on this eastern journey, so stick around for these earned insights and the bittersweet goodbye to one of my favorite eastern parks. The best adventures break you down to rock bottom before ascending your spirits to the highest peaks of consciousness. They force you to accept yourself and your circumstances for all they are, while reassessing the perspectives that pave you forward. Wholeheartedly trusting the process and knowing the light at the end of the tunnel is already yours. voyage would challenge me every step of the way with rocky descents and cascade side climbs, all the while breathtaking and invigorating as it was. It was one of those that left your spirit bright and alive, but your body dead and devoid of energy. Yet this test of my outdoor strength and endurance would yield the sweet reward of a waterfall cold plunge that I still dream about to this day. flowers smell so damn good. <laughs> Very reminiscent of honeysuckle, which I have definitely been missing since the Carolinas, so their lovely aroma is very welcome. <laughs> In other news, my skin feels insanely soft. I'm never gonna need moisturizer ever again. All I need is a good waterfall, I swear. Reaching the lower elevation point of the hike, it was time to dine on yet another peanut butter banana delight before embarking on the end part of the trail, which gives this trek its strenuous rating. But there were plenty of trailside falls to beckon me onward.
It's so rewarding to navigate through natural areas on foot, but from here on out, it was endless uphill, hence these slow walking shots. Thankfully, there were still endless mesmerizing cascades to discover. Suddenly we find pavement. What is this? Shout out to these tattered ass hiking boots that I've had since 16. They've been into four canyons, three islands, two continents, and have hiked hundreds of miles. This was their last big shebang, considering they displayed my fun socks a little more than I'd like. Broski here took a spill and recovered just quite well, honestly. While the remaining leg was short compared to the seven miles prior, at this point I was a walking corpse running purely on the promise of forested beauty dinner, and hopefully a picnic area shower if I was lucky. That was my first hike in Shenandoah that was rated on the park website as very strenuous. It certainly was a bit of an ass kicker, but I was actually really proud of how I handled it, but definitely need a shower regardless of waterfall plunges. So I found this beautifully abandoned picnic area and I'm super excited. If you haven't heard them, there is a crow making his presence known to the world and it is very cute. I'm sorry, a raven. A raven making his presence known to the world. What can I say? They wanted me to know the inspiration behind my local beer. With finding free places to sleep on forest roads and city streets alike, I don't always have the luxury of late nights in national parks. But this little overlook near town made for a necessary moment to seize my sweet Shenandoah sunset. longer to glimpse the delicate beauty of fireflies flickering in the dark forested frame of a sunset colored sky. After a peaceful night's rest beside an active train track, I resisted my crackhead yeti urges and took it easy on my last day, enjoying an iced chai at this adorable little coffee shop using the cute bathrooms and charging with the power outlets as I got my houseplant fix. I'm sure you can see why I adored this spot. Where normally I would rush into the park for quiet morning trails, I cruised through in the sunshine of late morning instead, grounding in presence and scenery, and envisioning the route that lay ahead in the northeast. Stopping at last night's overlook for a quick breakfast burrito of plantain, sweet potato, and refried beans. If you've been around for some of my previous videos, then you know that I almost quit the east coast and just went right back to the west but I think I have learned so many valuable lessons from my time spent here. And in doing that, I really learned to love the East Coast and I've really found a lot of places that feel like home here. It's been a surreal experience traveling along the mountains. I've kind of been popping on and off the Appalachian Trail areas, other backpacking areas as I went from the Smoky Mountains along the Blue Ridge Parkway to Shenandoah. And it's been an incredible journey. I think in the West, it can be really easy to just flow and explore and not really think about it too much. But on the East Coast, I constantly found myself just wanting to like plan everything and force everything to be perfect. And the fear of missing out was, was raging within me. That being said, I think the really important lesson I learned is just 
really learning to consciously flow and let go and accept what's happening around me. And it's crazy how you can learn these lessons and then still need to relearn them over and over again. And like, even if you think that you've like, achieved some wisdom in life you still really constantly have to like reassess that with yourself and that's something i've really learned about this there were a lot of times in shenandoah where my planning went awry because of weather or just no service no maps whatever it might be and there were a lot of times where i felt like getting upset and then it ended up always working out for the better and i always ended up on beautiful freaking hikes so that's something really important that i learned so in acknowledgement of that lesson i decided for my last little half day morning in shenandoah before I head north I kind of wanted to just embrace not caring at all and just kind of going in and flowing through the park I just decided to walk around the cute little town I slept in right outside the park I decided to have a very late breakfast on the overlook and I'm gonna go head to a very short probably crowded trail but I'm just not gonna care I'm gonna be present and I'm gonna enjoy the time and I think that's a really valuable takeaway that I've gotten I've learned these lessons in so many ways, just from traveling on the East Coast, meeting through hikers and having awesome experiences with them, making friends on trails, uh, just, just doing a lot of messing up and learning and all of that jazz. That being said, I'm definitely feeling really sentimental. It almost feels like a chapter is closing as I head north. I'm really excited to explore areas like Vermont and Massachusetts and Maine and upstate New York, but this has been a really special chapter and I'm definitely gonna miss it. I'm definitely gonna miss like bumping into Appalachian Trail Hikers, which it's kind of like seeing like one of my dreams in fruition in front of me. I really wanna do some through hiking trails in the future. So it's just been magical. Although I will say I have been scared by many an Appalachian Trail Hiker because you never hear them coming. They're not in a car. So like suddenly you turn around and there's like hikers behind you and it's always funny yeah but I'm definitely gonna miss them it's been a really cool experience to like see other people doing a voyage that I would like to do in the future but also learning not to be hard on myself and not having achieved that dream yet because you have to learn to trust the process like I am experiencing a wonderful part of my life and sure I'm not like the ultimate minimalist yet I'm not like the ultimate outdoor adventurer where I can just go into the wild with a backpack but that's a process I have to understand, love, and trust my process in doing so. So for all of those who have been along for this journey, thank you so much. And I hope that you learn just as much as I do, hopefully even more. While a little busy, this particular hike had a fun feature. The National Park Service app suggests exploring alongside the small gorge to get different angles of the falls. It was fun navigating my way along the water and seeing a series of gorgeous cascades unfold before my eyes. I highly recommend a slow-paced stay in Shenandoah, even to the most avid explorers. endlessly appreciate all support to my journey in the form of likes, shares, and patrons. I'd love to have you along for further growth and adventure as we explore the unknown northeast in future videos. I'll always be sharing fresh food inspiration and food for thought along the way. Until next time.